Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to worship today. Uh, welcome to uh, the 1030 service. We have a special guest with us today, Joy McElroy, who actually preached at the first service. We recorded her sermon, so she's able to have some conversations with parents about technology and, and uh, youth and uh, all that good stuff. She does reference just some important ways for us to think about those uh, on, on the margins and ways that we as a church can pray for uh, for that. And so a very powerful message from her today. So uh, welcome those of you who are watching online as well. So uh, those on Facebook Live or the live stream, uh, especially to Jane Knudsen. Thank you very much for sponsoring the broadcast in celebration of her 90th birthday yesterday. So happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jane. I'm grateful to uh, have you sponsoring today. Uh, Last night I was up at Wapo. How how did the campfire go, Kyle? Kyle was there playing and having fun with the kids. So we had uh, all of our ninth grade. I gotta do this. All of our ninth graders were there for their confirmation retreat. They will be affirming their baptism two Sundays from now on Reformation Sunday during this service. So that's going to be awesome. We're really looking forward to uh, hearing from them. They've also been working put some videos together to be able to explain, you know, different parts of being part of the congregational life. And so that's going to be our message in two weeks. Uh, our ninth graders had a great weekend. You can see their groups there, and then they had some fun. Uh, one, one of the groups apparently did uh, 27 rounds of Frisbee golf. At least 27 rounds. I, I don't even know if they were exaggerating, Kyle. I mean, I... I, I know, and then Britta is there. She, uh, she had a good time playing... Um, nine square so uh we have um just some great memories from this group and i've, I've really appreciated all of the confirmation guides and kathy uh walking alongside them uh one of the cool things the one of the last things that they'll be doing before their affirmation of baptism is trunk or treat uh you may recognize somebody in that picture there's a little bee in there that uh, has grown up a year so deacon and i couldn't help but throw that one in there uh, and then all of our kids uh, have been putting these trunks together and the creativity has been so much fun. We're hoping for good weather so we can be outside this year. So uh, thanks for everybody who's been bringing in some bags of candy. So we've got some stuff for the kids uh, in two weeks from now. Uh, Joy's going to be here. She does reference in her sermon today just being able to have some conversation. I don't know for sure if she'll still be here at 1130 after uh, worship. But if you have some questions or would like to get in touch with Joy, certainly uh, reach out to me and I'll get you in touch with her and cherish all children. Also, the picture directory, we do have times, uh, we have slots that are going to start opening up here. Uh, we have most of October's getting full, so we'll check that out. And if you can still get a slot there, the November slots are starting to open up too. So you're welcome to sign up for that. And then after worship today, the Creation Care Committee is gathering. And they invite you if you'd like to talk about that, if you'd like to talk about uh, ways our congregation can help uh, with stewardship of the earth. They are going to meet in the, confirmation, uh, in the conference room right after worship today, and you're welcome to come join them for that conversation. Uh, for our last announcements, though, I do ask that you please stand. I found out this morning from uh, Doug Holton's daughter, Katie, that he had died. Uh, he had esophageal cancer, and so Gail uh, had died, boy, just in the last maybe 16 months. And so keeping, keeping that family in our prayers as they've seen both of their parents uh, pass, yeah, but keeping that promise and that hope and that light in, in Doug's life as he's been able to uh, be a, just a, a beacon as a, a brother in Christ. Uh, and then also, Joyce Winnick died earlier this week. We are probably having the worship service a week from Tuesday. That'll be finalized very, very soon. Uh, so keep your eyes open for that obituary as they're working with Robert's Funeral Home. Uh, and then, again, with Doug's service, we don't know when that'll be, but uh, look, look for that as well. Let's pray for Doug and for Joyce. Heavenly God, we thank you for our brother Doug and for our sister Joyce, uh, these two uh, members of our body that, who, that have taught us and have shown us so many ways uh, to walk alongside of you, and we thank you for their lives. We thank you for the ways that you have been a blessing uh, in their lives, and now this hope and promise of resurrection that you have uh, shown them, uh, that we can, can live in that confidence and hope in this time and in this place. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now before we share the peace, 
you're already all standing. And so we do have a spot for the new members, uh, but we do have one new member. So we do have Julie. Hi, Julie. We're going to just let you all wave over. Julie, welcome to Faith Lutheran. Uh, there we go. We're trying to make it as welcoming as possible. Greet her after worship. Uh, we've had some, uh, some of our new members join in as well at the 9 o'clock. So we've had about a dozen folks join in the last two weeks. It's uh, exciting to see uh, the ability of our congregation coming together and uh, people joining our church. So thank you very much, Julie. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you to take a few moments to share that peace with those who are around you and uh, give a high five or a fist bump, whatever you'd like to do. And then while we have you standing, please sing with us, you have shown us. You have shown us, oh God, what is good. You have shown us, O oh Lord, what you require. You have heard all our songs, how we long to worship you. Yet you've told us the offering you desire. To do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. You said to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. You have shown us the riches of your love. You have shown us your heart for those in need. Lord, you're opening our ears. To the cries of the poor, you have called us to be your hands and feet. To do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. You said to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly. to live, being the one to sacrifice, willing to die to no real life, going beyond just words and songs, forgiving in times when we've been wronged, being the first to serve the last, giving to anyone who asks, the time has come to become who we are, blessing to the world. 
world without a need to be the stars. We want to be the church of Jesus, serving the one who came to free us. We want to be your church. We want to be your church. We want to live more like the Savior, fiery love for all our neighbors. We want to be your church. We want to be your church. Preserving the life that's all around Absorbing the blows of the beaten down Hearing the cries of the voiceless ones Recognizing justice done Choosing to love our enemies Across the world, across the street Allegiance to the King of Kings Before our nation and all things The time has come to become who we are Blessing to the world without a need To be the stars We want to be the church of Jesus Serving the one who came to free us We want to be your church we want to be your church. We want to live a more like the Savior. Fiery love for all our neighbors. We want to be your church. We want to be your church. of Jesus, serving the one who came to free us. We want to be your church. We want to be your church. We want to live a more like the Savior, our fiery love for all our neighbors. We want to be your church. We want to be your church. We want to be we the church of Jesus, church serving the one who came Church. We want to be a church. We want to live more like the Savior. Fiery love for all our neighbors. We want to be a church. We want to be a church. We want to be your church. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love the world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. <clears throat> o Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we have our prayer lab minute for today. There are many people and places who we want to regularly pray for. Family members, friends, folks going through a hard time. I'll be honest, it can be hard to remember to pray for all of those folks that we want to name before God. Today, I'd like to share a few tools or ideas that I've learned, which can be great reminders for intercessory prayer, that is, prayer that is for others. Something visual is always helpful, be that a bulletin board, a section of wall, or a small photo album that you hold pictures in. You can use pictures, post-it notes, or other physical reminders of the person or place that you want to pray for in that visual space. Another helpful way is to print out a list, to write out intercessions in a journal, or to keep things in a special folder that you can flip through when you have time. These are all ways that you can remember to lift folks up in prayer. Now, if you're more of a techie person, you could use one of the note keeping apps on your phone or a prayer app called Echo Prayer, where you can um, swipe through the names or places that you have put in as your personal list. Praying for others is a gift. May you find the right tools to help you regularly pray for people, places, and all of God's creation. Please stand as you're able for the gospel. A gospel reading from the 18th chapter of Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and to not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to this chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, He will quickly grant justice to them, and yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We had a little change up. I was going to be recorded, but since I'm still here, I'm, I'm live. So um, grace and peace to you in the name of our loving and protecting Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And greetings on behalf of Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota and Cherish All Children. I'm Joy McElroy, the Executive Director of Cherish All Children and a partner with you to support raising healthy generations of children and youth safe from sexual exploitation. Today's gospel lesson where Jesus shares a parable of a very persistent widow provides us the opportunity to think about our lives and the role of prayer in our lives. Jesus says to pray always and not to lose heart. Prayer is at the center of Cherish All Children's ministry. We pray for the safety of children in our homes, our churches, and throughout all communities. We especially pray for those who have been marginalized, pushed out of mainstream society due to poverty, homelessness, substance use and addictions, somehow being different from us because of race, gender identity, sexual orientation, and many more ways we separate ourselves from others. 
The widow in this parable was one of the marginalized in her society. Without a husband, a widow was left at the mercy of relatives to provide for her. It would have been unusual for a widow at this time to be able to advocate for herself. And yet she persisted in seeking justice over and over and over again until finally the judge was so annoyed and worn out, he granted her justice. What if our work for justice were as steadfast as the widow? We can become discouraged in our work to prevent sexual exploitation or in the many other ways we work for just a just society when we see the extent of the many issues our world is facing. And yet, like the widow, we can have the strength of character to keep going, even when we encounter discouragement or other challenges. And our prayer can keep us grounded. This past Sunday, I joined with the middle and high school youth at my church to hear from a Benedictine about centering prayer. We talked about the 10 lepers that Jesus had healed by asking them to walk along the road to the priests. See, they too were among the marginalized, kept at a distance in society, isolated and estranged from their families and communities. From a distance, they asked Jesus to have mercy on them. Jesus didn't just heal them on the spot, he asked them to participate in their healing by walking along the road to the priests. We too need to participate in the healing of our neighbors, ourselves, and the injustices we see. So for our centering prayer that morning with the young people, we were instructed to sit up straight with both feet on the ground, so I invite you to do that. And we did a breath in for a count of two, and then a breath out for a count of two. So we're going to go ahead and do that together. You can feel free to close your eyes if you'd like, and just a breathe in, one, two, out, one, two, two more times. We noticed how we felt then, if there was any tension released. And then we did this again, breathing in for two and out for two, while saying to ourselves on the in-breaths, Jesus, one, two, and on the out-breaths, mercy. So try this three times now. On the in-breath, Jesus, on the out-breath, mercy. The youth were asked when they might use a prayer like this in their lives, whether just the calming breaths three times or with the added Jesus mercy. Their answers included during swimming practice, while playing the trombone, before a test, someone added, or during the test, when I'm mad at my brother. They really got it that prayer can happen anytime, anywhere throughout our lives and can be the cornerstone helping us move through our lives. When faced with the unjust judge, the widow was relentless in her pursuit of justice. When we're fighting against systems and structures that create the conditions for some to abuse and exploit others, we can be relentless in our pursuit of justice. We can be fully present and work in solidarity with those who experience injustice. I think of the team that I work with through Metro Homeless Youth Services at LSS. These are the folks who work every day with young people who have often been pushed to the margins. It's often easy to go about our lives and not really see this part of our society while well, others are deeply engaged in the work of healing justice, and some of you may be as well. So these leaders, outreach workers, case managers, overnight house staff, and many more, they provide the deep healing work 
and long-term support structures for young people who may have experienced exploitation or other traumas that led them there. These leaders truly see these young people, hear their individual stories, and engage with them on finding the road forward. So how do we engage with the young people in our lives? We might not have regular interactions with those considered living in the margins, um, but we most likely have regular contact with young people who may be struggling with friendships, family dynamics, identity, mental health issues, drug and alcohol use, or other things. Our young people need us to see them, listen to their stories and their struggles, talk regularly with them about what healthy relationships look like, who they're talking to online, what TikToks are they making, what games are they playing, what chat rooms are they in. Truly take the time and show the interest in their lives without judgment. Helping them to feel our love and the love of God, their value as a child of God, all works to strengthen them and build a network of support. Our faith communities can be places where young people feel safe, valued, and loved for all of who they are. I've introduced Cherish All Children's Safe and Healthy Relationships Youth Guide to Pastor John and Kathy Nelson here at Faith. Looks like this. And there's plans to get your high schoolers um, engaged in this um, four session guide um, this education year. This was created to support youth leaders, pastors, and other adult leaders in our faith communities to engage youth in activities and conversations that can help them stay safe in online spaces and in in-person relationships and to see themselves and value themselves as a child of God. Opening these conversations between youth and safe adults and engaging them in skill building activities with their peers at church can support you as family members in continuing these conversations at home. Staying connected is critical so young people feel supported, loved, and valued just for who they are. When isolated or marginalized, like the 10 lepers or like the widow, young people are much more vulnerable to the tactics of those who seek to exploit them. We can support young people in staying safe, providing them with knowledge, love, and care. If you want to find out some more information, um, you can go to our website, cherishallchildren.org, and find all sorts of resources and links to help keep youth and um, children safe, including online safety information, um, the full youth guide, or you could reach out to me as well to, to learn more and find out more. I'm going to close in prayer, and this prayer is from the ELCA Social social message on gender-based violence. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send your spirit to guide us in this work for justice. Guide our minds to be aware of the injustice in our world. Guide our hearts to work with compassion. Use our voices to speak with our neighbor. Amen. Thank you so much, Joy, for being with us today and for your great words. Um, we have our musical offering next from our praise band. Savior to all came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and not be served.
Thank you so much. Um, for those of you who don't know, we do have, um, I never remember what these are called, offering boxes at the exit. They're bins. They're black. They're by the doors. They have a sign on them that says offering. So um, uh, if you were wondering, that's where, what those are, I'm, I'm going to really work to learn what they're called. <laughs> Yeah, we should have a contest, because I always think it's like a lockbox, and that's not a very welcoming <laughs> word to use, right? So you're welcome to share your gifts and offerings in that place. Um, if you want to stand as you're able and join in this prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing. And make us ready to share with all in need, through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. I invite you to lift up your prayers aloud as we pray for the church, the world, God's creation. So please speak aloud your prayers of concern or hope or joy and celebration as we pray together. God of the outcast of widows, homeless youth, children and elders, and everyone in between. Hear us now as we lift our prayers to you, God. For Joel. For those who are struggling with addiction. Prayers of comfort for Preston and Summer. Prayers of comfort for Preston and Summer. Peace and strength for Al for Tess coming up this week. Peace and strength for Al for Tess coming up this week. Prayers for Renee. Prayers for Christine's healing before her mission trip.
We give you thanks, God, for the squeals of children, for beautiful colors, and for all that fills our hearts and gives us joy. In the power of your love and by the moving of the Holy Spirit, we pray all these things, God, trusting that you hear everything on our hearts. Amen. And so it was in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Together we join in the words as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the grace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll invite you to be seated, and we'll invite the, uh, uh, everyone to come forward. We're going to end up doing this kind of in two lines. Uh, so we'll, we'll have this side go first, and then we'll move the basket over there so that this side can receive communion as well. Uh, in the past, we'd been doing communion kind of right at the end and sending you on your way. But today, uh, we tried this last week. We're going to incorporate it where we're going to have... Uh, we'll have communion. You get to go back to your seats, and then we'll send our sendings. Uh, we'll sing together our sending song, and then be on our way. Come, this table that is set before us, all are welcome to receive the gift of God's grace that goes with us today, uh, and know that all are welcome today.
And now may the body and blood that we've just received strengthen and keep us in God's grace. Amen. I invite you to put a hand upon your heart and we say this blessing together. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Let everything that has breath sing along, please. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing with everything. Thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to praise. With Thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to praise. Peace serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.